Let's play Otogi 2 Immortal Warriors for the Xbox. Released in 2004 by From Software. The sequel to, I think, the former year's uh, Otogi Myth of Demons. Which, uh, if you're curious about the, f the first game in the series, go watch Small Fry's LP. He's a uh, SSJ Fry 14 on YouTube. Because he LP'd the first game, and that's gonna help you. I'm just gonna load an empty save here. That's gonna help you understand this game a little bit better because it's a little. It's it's just a hack and slash really, but the game mechanics are sort of difficult to explain. And here's the backstory, which I can sum up in about five minutes faster than this slow scrolling text does. Okay, here's what happened. A thousand years after the last war, which I think happened in the first game. Um. Demons showed up, but then there was a holy orb, and they saved the world from demons. And then the demons came back, even though they had a holy orb, and now they need to use the holy orb to drive them away again, or something like that. I've got too much game to explain to actually worry about the story. If you're more curious about the character's past, Raiko, the main character, was also in the first game, you can go watch that LP that I mentioned. But here's the introductory cutscene to this game. Which features a big white fox. What else did you expect? It's Japanese demons, come on. And there is Seimei. Seimei is one of the main characters in this game. Seimei is a priestess. Who wants to save the world? And apparently stole something from the White Fox. I'm gonna have, if you haven't noticed, the voices are in Japanese. You can set them to English too. But I think it sounds so much better just to have them in Japanese. So excuse me if you're too lazy to read the subtitles. Because <laughs> I'm not gonna voice everything in the game. Oh, and now Seimei's dead. Except she isn't, because that was a dummy. Not entirely obvious what's going on in this game. Like I said, there's a crap load of Japanese mythology baked into this. It's basically all Japanese fantasy mythology stuff. So things like the paper doll thingies... Uh, I guess Japanese people would get it, but yeah. Just, just bear with me. The game's fun. <laughs> so here's the first level. Basically a little tutorial, introductory level. Seimei's so looking for something. Yes, she's looking for something. She thinks it's beyond there. So here's the game for you. It's the third person hack and slash, really. You got two attacks, light attack and heavy attack, and you have different combos combining the two depending on which character you're playing as. You have a dash button, you can also double jump and dash in the air and do a whole bunch of funky stuff. And there's enemies that you kill. And that's basically it, as far as gameplay goes. Of course there's more than that. Sheesh, this is gonna take some while getting used to. Excuse me while I fumble about. This chick's got a grab on her heavy attack button, which most characters don't, so that's gonna... See, see if I just press Y, which is heavy attack. She's just gonna grab. So to get a, an actual attack and I have to... Light attack, heavy attack. Okay, that's a combo. <laughs> okay, like I said, excuse me while I fumble around getting used to this. Meanwhile, enjoy how... Uh, how destructive everything in the game is. Well, destructible, rather. That's really the... Uh, the gimmick of the first game, which is carried, carried over even better in this game. Pretty much everything can be destroyed. And they make it so that you want to destroy everything too. Oh, here it is. Whatever it is. A little loading screen. Get used to seeing that. And this is first introductory level and between levels. The levels are kind of short, so. But that's quite alright. This is where we're introduced introduced to the other playable characters. In the first game there was only one. Raiko. In this game there's six? Five? Six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. They're a funky bunch. Look at them. S 
Suetake. He's a tree. Sadamitsu. She has a bird. Kintoki. He has a huge ass axe. Tsuna. And he's a doggy. And she's a priestess. That's that's a good combo, isn't it? And now they're all gonna kill themselves. Yeah, seriously, they're gonna kill themselves. Check it. What a good way to start a game, huh? Everyone dies. The end. <laughs> And Sammy does a little dance to summon Raiko back from the dead because he's been a he's, he's he must have been dead for a thousand years if you understood the uh, the intro intro thingy correctly. Yeah, if I'm interpreting it correctly, it was a thousand years since the last game, and he died at the end of that. So I think I think I mean he probably died of old age or I don't know I don't know. But now he's gonna get torn back into the world of the living to do someone's bidding for the second time. Well, the third time, technically. In his first life, he, did, he was he served under the emperor or something like that. And then he died, got brought back to serve a princess in the first game. And then he died again and got brought back to serve a priestess in this game. That's what being a good warrior will get you. Everyone just wants to bring you back to life to do their bidding. But I don't play Simi, because Raiko is a cool character. Look at this dude. Look at this fool. He never says a word in either of the games. You never see his eyes. It is... I think it's implied that, that he never opens his eyes. Which is just... What? How is he fighting with his eyes closed? But oh well, he's a cool character. He's like, yeah, why am I here? Dude. Uh, okay. He doesn't seem to have a problem with that. He gets to kill some more demons. He's good at that, so... And there's his trusty sword. So now things are finally gonna pick up a little bit. And this is where I have to explain the gameplay mechanics even more closely. This is gonna be confusing. I apologize in advance. <laughs> That's a gameplay de device. まだ危ういあなたを守るため。中華につくたか。ちょうど良い。ライコ。あなたの力見せてもらいますよ。Of course they are. Well, you knew that. You wouldn't have killed your five or your four pals there. あなたの食材を果たす。If you didn't know I was going to be a strong warrior, now did you? Yeah, this is where the game kind of starts, even though this is still the tutorial level. The strength within the souls of our generals will regenerate our corporeal body. Right. Our body is a temporary shell. And what? And cannot be sustained in this world without magic. Okay. Never forget this. Yeah, that's a big deal. That was the whole deal behind the first game, too. Since the first thing that happens in the first game is you get brought back to life. Uh, you see the the little stuff in the bottom right corner? You have a yellow fan, a blue fan, and some beads. The yellow fan and the beads are our health. Basically, it's sort of... Think... Uh, oh, a strength orb. I'll explain those later. Think energy tanks in Metroid Prime. Or Metroid in general, basically. Or... Uh, Hard containers in Zelda. Each bead is one fan's worth of health. Okay? If the fan, the yellow fan runs out, that means we lose one bead of health. If all beads are gone, we are dead. But the fan will regenerate. 
up to... It's kind of weird to explain. If a bead is broken, it can't come back unless you pick up a health pickup. But if a bead is only part way gone, it will regenerate over time. So long as we have magic. Right? And magic is used both for doing funky stuff like dashing, which is this move, and this upward attack, which basically lets you fly, and also magic, which is this stuff. Ah. <sighs> But magic is also used up simply by existing, because we're not supposed to be alive. And with that, I'm afraid I'll have to leave you. Until next video... I explain some more stuff, I guess? I'm a little confused myself. Uh, I hope you stick around. See ya! <laughs>